Society and Politics By Rick Delmonico We live in the shadows of perception. In every area of politics, the goal is control. Those that control the definition steer the culture as they please. The laws of nature mirror social interaction in that they are emergent behaviors. People are social creatures, and so we form societies. Valuing people is one of the most important things you can do, as a member. The child is swayed by every flight of passion, the man by responsibility. If our leaders ignore the rule of law, it is certain that they have broken the social contract. The storm is not in the wind, the wind is in the storm and so the idea is in the social movement. We the people stand together and call for a lasting peace that is not corrupted by greed. In politics the truth is always buried under a hot steaming pile of agendas. In the spiritual world, success is measured in souls. When we do good for others, we must make an effort to lead them to prosperity and not dependency. Who will be willing to die for their country if they discover their leaders are a bunch of criminals? We have now entered the age of Freganomics, when a critical mass says screw it we are finished. The best way to build community is to minimize social distance. This harmonic positioning has a precise relationship that creates constructive reinforcement of behavioral patterns, meaning and value. There will always be islands of peace, each desperately trying to separate itself from the madness around it. The power of a young woman is in her beauty and charm. The power of a woman in her later years is her social position and her ability to convince. Brilliance requires a foundation of understanding, this does not exclude simplification, in fact it may be necessary for clarity and application. Building community is probably the most important activity, at every level of the hierarchy of social interaction. The consensus agreement of the group will steer the ship to calmer waters. The storms will come, but the crew will be focused and ready for the challenge. The greater good has been defined as the ends justify the means. The common good says that liberty resides in the means. The liberty of one's conscience is the right of every man and to remove this liberty by force or coercion is a crime against all of humanity. Be certain of this one fact, there are desires that drive men to foolish behavior. Men must first of all be masters of their own person before they can earn the right to govern others. When we are so disposed to opinion as to become contrary to reason, we have entered into the realm of emotion. In this place the intellect is helpless against the ravages of passion, only the spirit has the power to restore reason. The problem with socialism is, eventually you will run out of other people's money. Socialism will fail for the same reason that communism failed, because it makes no distinction between those who cannot do for themselves and those who will not do for themselves. Minimizing social distance is one of the best ways for those in the higher levels of an organization to build trust. So how do you minimize social distance? Develop your interpersonal skills, emotional intelligence, and spiritual awareness. The social contract is not a declaration of a perpetual war but of a lasting peace whose regulation is charged by the will of the people under the rule of law. I pray that we are wise enough to keep our moral compass. There is no left slash right paradigm, there is only us. Governments and corporations are about networking. The actors, as a general rule, try to optimize their position. As power and influence concentrate, liberty fades. Money spent on education and money spent on prisons is inversely proportional. Justice is destroyed by that curious feature of the human condition called greed. The only defense is accountability. Once balance is gone, tipping points become inevitable. Are governments exempt from human nature? No, governments amplify all of our flaws. When prosecutors decide that winning is more important than truth and justice, we have entered dangerous ground. Our politicians have insulated themselves from their decisions. People only care about problems that affect them directly. We need to make their decisions, their problem. What is Twitter? It is a social construct, designed to make money by getting you addicted to the dopamine hit every time someone likes or retweets. When citizens from another country flood a county with migrants, you get a concentration of that country's problems. The best and brightest, usually stay where they are. You can't make a difference in an echo chamber. Imagine where we would be if each member of Congress finished their tenure with the country in better shape than when they started. Qualia is your inner mental experiences. Science has no way to prove or explain it. You don't have to prove to someone that pain is real. Science has limitations. What is law? As with many things, it depends on who you ask. In government, law is the method by which you extract value from the population. In other words mafia tactics for filthy lucre. Martin Luther King Jr. Said I have a dream. Q says trust the plan. I'll go with the dream. The trust the plan narrative is not sophisticated. I've been attacked by so many Q-tards for questioning their Q-crap that I have to believe it is some kind of a crazy Q-cult. Law relies on constraints. No constraints, no law. No law, no emergence. Militaries and law enforcement organizations tend to be, by necessity, cultish. It's really not all that difficult to notice the deception built into our reality. What is hard to figure out is whether we are somehow involved. 
there may be a conceptual propagation of manifestations. In the spiritual realm, light creates and darkness copies because darkness only has access to the shadows. Did you know that governments spend millions or billions of dollars to figure out the best way to manipulate the population? AI is coming online and will be far more successful at tricking you into believing a lie. There are mafia-style operations going on at every level where money can be made. It doesn't even matter what side of the issue you are on. People love money more than they should. A very subtle, imperceptible, alteration of the roulette wheel will yield, over time, a fortune for the house. The price of liberty and the value of liberty are two entirely different things. The greatest stupidity in man is not his arrogance or ignorance, it is failing to realize who he is, lack of awareness. The thing I fear the most, the thing that is capable of the most damage is, unrestrained stupidity. Power eats into the political system like termites. The tree looks fine however, slowly but surely it becomes weak until one day, the tree falls suddenly without warning. At all times, society must maintain a continuity of proven structural integrity while at the same time exploring opportunities for improvement. In other words the liberals and the conservatives must work together to maintain balance. Always and inevitably some part of the world is asleep, should all of us, in one moment, become awakened, it would be too much for the world to bear. These dreams have a purpose, a mission, an influence in the intentional field of implicate order, and must somehow be painting the world in a more vivid hue. When desire sleeps it is but a subtle influence, when desire awakens, it drives the world and everything in it in ways that are too sublime and terrible to imagine. One does not resist the scrutiny of an all-powerful dictator, one must bend and hope that life gives, at least from time to time, a certain measure of justice and whenever possible, mercy as well. The system has become a cesspool of greed and corruption. You cannot enter the system without getting this horrible smell on you. Along our path lingers a scent, it is the leftover expressions imparted to the world by your passing. Some people leave a sweet fragrance and others a foul stench. You are responsible for the odor you leave in your wake. Governments mistakenly believe that they must regulate every disruption to the system, not realizing that for the most part, they are the cause of the disruptions. The system is fragile because of human nature itself. To homogenize culture would be a crime against humanity. We are different for a reason. Desertification of culture or turning our culture into a desert. A person is always a composite creature, depending on what he is connected to. A very clever lawyer can create a lot of damage, we can only hope that lawyers never figure out how to manipulate physical law. If there is money to be made, the facts will be twisted. This is true of all human endeavors, science, religion, politics etc. Dynamic problems require dynamic solutions. An oligarchy does not require a good and moral citizenry but a constitutional republic does. If we lose our moral compass, we lose our country. What is more effective evaluating achievement or recognizing achievement? The goal is to understand the interconnectedness of the system and make improvements wherever you can. I would suspect that if people are able to get out of their own way, this would happen more often. An exponential growth in technology will not last forever, it will peak and then fade. If we are lucky enough to survive it, man's capacity to innovate should not exceed his ability to live in peace. You cannot identify an enemy without becoming one. Competition has useful and destructive qualities, we need to identify and utilize the useful aspects while understanding how the destructive aspects worm their way into our thinking and undermine so much of what we would build. There is a dynamic when it comes to creating enemies, often it is just through misunderstanding. We should oppose evil and foolishness without forgetting that, on occasion, the fool can be won over with a little kindness and understanding. Too many talking heads, so few real experts. As an example, anyone who espouses anarchy or communism does not understand human nature. Anarchy and communism can only work in very small communities, as the community gets larger, the system breaks down exponentially. Critical thinking is the best education. Do not teach children to parrot facts they could easily look up, teach them how to think. If you don't know what is going to work best, do not get lazy, find out and teach it. Just in case it wasn't obvious, quantitative easing is a form of taxation. How to recognize a black swan, it will probably be something like an approaching storm giving at least some warning. Watch the horizon, hope for the best, plan for the worst. Adam Smith never intended organizational structure to remain static, he would be shocked to see how little progress we've made. The bigger the government, the more it can protect you from life. No, life is messy the bigger the government, the bigger the problem. The wise diplomat turns his enemies to allies, not by reason but by steering the passion of the heart towards the shining shore of a most beautiful and perfect land. Any government that uses law to justify crimes against humanity is banking on the idea that they will not ever have to give an account for their actions. This is a categorical mistake, I would not bet my soul on the outcome. As the complexity in any system increases, the ability to form a correct understanding decreases exponentially. The best evidence of unsophisticated ideas is the behavior that follows. 
opportunity is, creating space in the dynamics of the system for others to fill in, thus generating a whole that is greater than the sum of its parts. If we cannot maintain a peaceful transfer of power, then we are moving to dangerous ground. How do natural systems find balance? They have no choice, it is either balance or oblivion. Culture is herd mentality, creativity lives in the fringes. The value of trust is very much like the value of dignity. Greed is maximizing value for self. Love is maximizing value for others. The wisest see the interconnectedness of all things at every scale and from this, choose the things that create the most value. The people in power have become very good at lining their pockets from corrupt associations. The system is broken from the bottom to the top. The most powerful people will be concerned with consolidation and continuity of power and not much else. We do not have the moral will or the moral skill to navigate the world we now find ourselves in, we do however have the capacity for great destruction. The integration of information and vulnerabilities move together. We are not material creatures having a spiritual experience, we are spiritual creatures have a material experience. At this point in history, war is Russian roulette with a bullet in every chamber. It is important to note just how much deception is required in social interactions. The higher the strata, the higher the stakes and the more important the deception. There are as many definitions for success as there are people. I would suspect that our politicians have become very good at accumulating wealth and not so good at anything else. Nothing has the power to destroy like secrets in high places. Trust is so important why would anyone think manipulation is even an option? Agendas create illusions. Life has complexities that cannot be described so easily. Do you feel an urgent need to be useful to others? That is not why we are here. You are a partner in a dance of mutual expression. Because of the internet, it has become very common for people to posture themselves as experts. The more dynamic information becomes, the less truth it contains, meaning is built from this process. When the system is broken, people from every level of society try to game the system to their advantage. There are levels of broken and I do not want to know what the bottom looks like. Definition of a zombie, full spectrum ignorance. All ideologies are flawed, if you have an ideology it can only mean one thing, you don't understand the system. No ideology is perfect, the system must constantly be tuned for optimization and the problems we face are beyond the scope of human comprehension. People who hate, filter out a great deal more of their perception than people who love. The reason for the stock market was to invest in new companies to generate wealth but it has turned into a gambling house because of human nature. Is it completely impossible to keep the good things good? If everyone wants to game the system, they will collapse the system. You don't understand the system, no one does. You should be looking at this thing from every angle, at every scale and maybe then you will be in a position to make a wise decision now and then. The lust for power and the love of money will be our undoing. Humanity can survive many things but once information technology enters the picture, I can offer you no hope. In case it wasn't obvious, it is responsibility that greases the wheels of progress, it is responsibility that binds societies together and it is responsibility that makes a man a man. Entitlements are the best way to ruin the lives of your children. If we survive the information revolution, we will be faced with a choice as to how we will distribute the abundance that will be created by fully automated manufacturing. It is important to note that integration and vulnerabilities move together. A corporation has no conscience or soul, it is not a person despite the legal posturing. A corporation is very much like a psychopath. The best leaders don't give a damn about the definition of leadership, they are thinking about more important things. The world would be a paradise if we could minimize bureaucracies and agendas. Politicians need to be trusted, a politician that is trying to remove all moral constraints is telling you, they cannot be trusted in other areas as well. Liberty and free will must include the ability to control the definitions. We are moving into a multi-layered oligarchy of bankers, corporations, and intelligence agencies. Any who would speak critically of them, dare not speak above a whisper. Lawyers drag out litigation because they can get more money, it is the same for bureaucrats that want perpetual wars. Wars should be a brief last resort operation, designed to resolve a conflict, not perpetuate it. An overly complex explanation began with an unsophisticated assumption. The path to the slaughterhouse must by necessity, be made as attractive as possible, to pull the sheep to their destiny, but if you mean to push, you only need deception and force. In the 20th century, governments murdered many times the number of people that were killed by criminals. There are no perfect ideologies for the simple reason that there are no perfect people. Borrowed wisdom is learning from others' mistakes. Some people are indescribably nonsensical. Definitions are important, we all have to agree on the definitions in order to communicate. Culture is always shaping these dynamic expressions, sometimes in ways that are unpredictable. Place your trust in a person and hold them accountable. Do not place your trust in an organization or committee, they will always betray your trust through mediocrity. Some people value fame and fortune, I value ideas. Practical wisdom is wisdom with its boots on. 
As soon as guns came into existence, so too did the natural right to a fair and reasonable defense against them this right belongs to each person and no law is legally binding that prevents the natural right to self-defense. We no longer have a republic or democracy, what we have at this time is a kleptocracy. Masters make very poor students. The greatest freedom is the freedom to desire, the greatest desire is the desire to be free. Every time power concentrates innocent people die, the more power, the more death. As social systems become more complex, our ability to understand the system decreases exponentially however, our ability to destroy has increased to the point where the system itself could very quickly become irrelevant. As power concentrates, those that uphold the laws will become increasingly lawless. We don't need the intelligence agencies to protect us. What we need is protection from the intelligence agencies. This is just like the mafia coming into your little shop and saying, we're gonna sell you some protection. Everyone is selling something, no one comes into the world that is not trying to exert some kind of influence. If you want to have a profound influence, learning how to think is more important than learning what to think. When the AI takes over, all of the manipulation will occur beneath the level of human perception. The greatest danger to any country is the ignorance of its citizens. Good people stick to the rules and evil people exploit this because they are the corruptocrats of a kleptocracy. Has it dawned on anyone that powerful idiots may have gotten together to promote their brand of stupidity? Law is a constraint on dynamic associations. The world is a strange place. It often doesn't make sense. What other creature will engage in destructive behavior out of sheer boredom or stupidity? How is it possible that value could become so subjective that evil looks desirable? Turbulence is the movement broken up into too many directions. It is the connecting of complementary expression. The networking of meaning. The branching out of possibilities. We are riding a wave of energy and we have a little control but to me it is very strange that some people don't understand how little that control is. It pleases the elite to no end, to see the sled dogs fight for the lead position however, the dogs do not have the whip and we will go over the cliff together, in agreement or disagreement. Pride causes a filtering of your perception. It does not increase information and understanding, it decreases it. Please be aware that pride is a great danger and must be monitored constantly. You are constantly telling stories to yourself about yourself, take great care in the stories you tell. We cannot guarantee that a revised constitution would last over 230 years. The value of liberty is very much like the value of dignity. Fighting evil is the same as arguing with an idiot. Those with the power will win. Ethics is irrelevant, justice is irrelevant. The corruptocrats have infiltrated everything, evil is not constrained by ethics. You set out on a course of action and figure there are about 20 things that can go wrong, as it turns out, it was more like 80 or 100. The people at the top have weapons that are, for all practical purposes, undetectable. For us there is no reasonable defense. The bad news, you can't fix the system from inside the system. The good news, God is outside of the system. Taking the guns from the population will cause an escalation of criminals, just like prohibition. Those at the top are an occultocracy and their minions are the corruptocrats of a kleptocracy. There is nothing more dangerous than concentrated stupid. What looks desirable in the future often looks regretful in the past. Liberty and equality are opposing forces that require balance. How do natural systems find balance? They have no choice, it is either balance or oblivion. The difference between an artist and a businessman, an artist is not constrained by financial concerns. Society is a collection of disparate personalities struggling to be relevant. There's a lot of broken stuff in the world. Don't think particle, think quantum of action in a field. In any system, as you add to the system, the system itself changes. Dimensions could also be virtual like particles and the only thing that may be discrete is ratio. No one has a monopoly on truth. I don't trust Q. I don't trust truthers. I don't trust anyone but God. Don't be a cutard. Is stupid illegal? It should be. It is always about money. Should we trust rich people? They didn't get that way by being nice. Once you go down the rabbit hole, don't expect anything to make sense. Play is the exploration of state space. All large societies will organize into some form of government and it will not matter if the members love freedom or not. There is no set of rules that will make men do the right thing. What we need is practical wisdom and a moral compass. The effort required to see value in the deeper layers has a payoff that moves with the dynamics of uncertainty and as the dance becomes more elaborate, it is only the anchor of understanding bound to the new and novel jumping off points that allows us to reach these far distant objectives. The ability to see value or meaning increases as the network grows. The understanding of the familiar branches out into novelty by the degrees of freedom inherent in the position we have obtained in the landscape. Appreciation requires understanding which is nested in time. Dreams have at least two features, they disregard logic and they are decoupled from the conscious will. It is as if a subsystem of the mind is working out or exploring scenarios. I get emergence, evolution, not so much. 
Collecting ideas is not enough, you have to synthesize them. Identifying a mechanism like survival of the fittest does not mean that you should exclude all other possible explanations. If you want to use hate for some agenda, don't expect the results to be good. I hate echo chambers, I love ideas. You can't force ideas to be true but ideas make great jumping off points. There are many more ways to be disordered than ordered. There are many more ways to be unethical than ethical. Ethics is sophisticated. It's difficult to be relevant in a world of distractions. Orient yourself towards the greatest good you can conceive of and proceed courageously. There are transcendent properties to the human mind. Computers have none of these properties, with the possible exception of the internet. Sophistication is an organizing principle. You're only as stupid as your next mistake. A true prophet has 100% accuracy, a false prophet is taken outside the city walls and stoned. God is serious. Any Christian that is focused on law has taken his eyes off of Jesus. The woman desires the bad boy who is only good for her. The man desires the good girl who is only naughty for him. The initiation of conflict is to push an agenda. Maybe the reason they kicked God out of the schools and government institutions is so that they could get rid of our God-given rights. Balance is the best ideology. Survival of the fittest is an oversimplification because the creature is tuned to the value in the environment. All variation is constrained and sophistication emerges as a consequence of value. The fine-tuning problem says that the cosmic accident we inhabit qualifies as a miracle. There is an unsolved argument among physicists as to whether time is symmetrical or not. Faith is not proving a thing to be true, it is acting as if it were true, it is your walk through the world. Power is not for taking, it is for giving. Notice, it is very different to give life than to take it. There are lots of things that create efficiency in the market, bureaucracy isn't one of them. Our mafia-style government really likes the idea of redistribution. The Darwinitard and the Religitard are on opposite ends of the description axis but on the same end of the stupid axis. Darwinitard, someone who believes in cosmic accidents. Religitard, someone who has never made the effort to properly understand the Bible. At every level of the social hierarchy stupid can be manifested. While the quality of inquiry differs with discipline as a continuum of art and science, those on the science end of the spectrum neither understand nor want to, the areas that become too subjective to be explained. Good explanations are, by their nature, simple. Art lives nearer to the heart. Imagination connects the impossible to the possible. Because of levels of description, explanation fuzzes out at some point. The middle class is the engine of the economy, the producers and consumers. Government is cargo, along with several other factors. We need this plane to fly. The narrative is designed by those who are in a position to influence the populace for the sole purpose of manipulation in order to gain more control. We have to rise above the deliberations and look at the situation holistically. You could be correct in what you assert but incorrect in what you deny or vice versa or even some combination of the two. Here's an idea, weed all of the corruption out of both the Democratic and Republican parties, get together and then get some work done. The system is broken. The bad apples come from bad barrels made by bad barrel makers, the system. Music transcends the mathematical relationships it is constructed from. Music contains many levels of meaning. The meaning transcends the music. God is a mathematician only in the sense that music contains mathematical relationships. The journey of discovery is a lonely business. There is a long-standing argument in science regarding free will. There is a determinate side and a metaphysical, outside physics, side. As I understand it, free will is emergent, it transcends the computations it is constructed from. The intellect is not isolated, it resides within an emotional context and emotion resides within a spiritual context. Framing is the idea that time and sequence also play a role in shaping perception. Does evil have more potential than good? In other words, is it more energetic? If we consider this question in terms of meaning, I would have to conclude that evil contains less meaning than good does. Evil is very much like stupid. If the elite get total control, you will have to earn your right to life and you will own nothing. People are lazy, these ideas are not easily obtained and the ever-growing concepts not easily contained, the levels of description always cause the image to become fuzzy around the edges of cognition. Society is pushed to and fro not by engaging the head for it is the heart that steers the course of history. Politicians lie for a living and the narrative is heartfelt. As soon as the legislative body discovers that it can benefit at the expense of others from the laws it creates, the social fabric begins to unravel. In order to make sense of the world, we ascribe meaning to the things we don't understand. Journalism must, at the very least, rise above the juvenile behavior of those they criticize. Natural law, in so far as society is concerned, is simply a collection of forces in dynamic association, seeking balance. The main purpose of inquiry is understanding and as the stories we tell get better, the less sophisticated stories are lost to time but if something is worth believing in it is timeless. Sound financial doctrine will serve us better than passionate rhetoric. Do not argue with people that need educating. 
There is no proper definition of the fool, a definition would suggest that the fool is predictable. There may be a thousand ways to do a thing but few ways to do a thing well. Death is the cessation of an organizing principle in the operation of an information system. The activity does not end everywhere at once, the loss of fitness cascades through the system. The crooked politicians are trying to con you into paying their salaries while they rob and cheat their way to the top of the food chain. All of the chaos and evil of World War II was created by the idea that the ends justify the means. I would expect every religion to fracture into 10,000 versions of itself. This is because the lust for power and control is always present. Lies become more complicated over time, the truth does not. Your interactions with your environment shapes your self-narrative. Bad apples in bad barrels from the bad barrel makers, it s the system stupid. Criminals in high places are very interested in law not for the purpose of justice but for the purpose of exploitation. It should not be surprising that when these people figure out how to convert power into money, they will. The multifaceted ability to negotiate with each other is subverted by power. Power doesn't negotiate. Bitcoin, stock market. Gaming the system. I make my money the old-fashioned way, I produce something. Wisdom is more concerned with the health of the system than the destruction of the misguided agents. The spirits entice you, promising to give you what you want until they can change what you want. 5 Stages of a Purge 1. Fake News 2. Denial of Rights 3. Targeted Violence 4. Round UPS 5. Genocide. We each have our station in life and those that attempt to rise above their station are sure to encounter a lot of fuss. If you piss off someone in a position of power, you are in jeopardy, no matter how smart you are the wisdom of your opponent and the jeopardy you face are inversely proportional. Fear porn has evolved into hope porn. We become entangled by the connections in the material world, which is an interface, and our consciousness is a collection of entangled experiences. If power is ever allowed to concentrate beyond the local level and into the global scale, expect depopulation. You should always be suspicious of those in power. They didn't get there by being nice. There are greater dangers than stupid leaders but not many. Depopulation is on the table because those in power believe that the population has endangered the environment. Remember, it does not matter if their beliefs are true, they will act on those beliefs. The passionate heart is not to be feared but celebrated, if you must fear, fear apathy. Time managed by the heart is more valuable than time managed by the head. It is not practical to waste time in self-narrative, the world is out there and it is the connections that matter. When idiots rule, dumb shit happens. Free will is a fractal probability distribution. Only those who do not love can keep their heart safe. The nobility are just as flawed as everyone else in that they share the same human condition. We are intrigued by stories but we seldom learn from them, experience is the best teacher. You don't have to convince anyone that pain is real, it is probably the most real thing we know of. Humanity is like a great symphony and removing elements would only diminish the majesty, the depth and breadth of our expressions and experiences, the triumphs and the tragedies. Let's just snip a few notes. The Nazis were national socialists just like Antifa. The irony is staggering. Anyone who thinks our leaders are squeaky clean is delusional. The problem is power, power doesn't negotiate. Manipulation is a cancer to any society. I am not your enemy, that would be your self-narrative. In an honor culture, the members have elevated the sport of antagonization to a high art. Governments don't have to be efficient, the less efficient they are, the more money they take from the citizens. They must have stopped teaching this in school, so high school students can't be experts. In the 20th century 260 million disarmed people were killed legally, by government. The proper definition of a crime, harm, loss, or injury was caused by someone but governments increasingly create laws to go after people they can't control and in so doing actually commit crimes themselves. The people that try to control the system through law are the biggest fools of all. Systems self-organize so, understanding becomes the thing that matters. Emotion has more dimensions than intellect, spirit has more dimensions than emotion. Idiots always think they're right. There is only one miracle but it is a fractal. In business, you can win the argument and lose the customer. Cater to the customer's needs, not wants. The goal is understanding. Being right requires perfection, being wrong has no constraints. The creature is not tuned to survival, it is tuned to the value in the environment. The woman is tuned not as a singular creature but as a composite, mother slash infant. Pseudo-intellectualism, the more artificial the intellect the less the sense of humor about it. He speaks as one who has eaten spoiled food and dreamed a strange dream. To be relevant and influential, you need at least three things, luck, talent, and determination. Stare into the abyss and you will lose your ability to trust. Perception is the mapping of the material world onto the physical structure of the creature. The map becomes part of the material world. Definition of overly complex, the levels of description are so deep that the meaning begins fluctuating. The intellectual realm is not superior to the realm of emotion, 
a highly charged emotion can reduce an intellect to an idiot. The spiritual realm is higher than the emotional realm. You are a collection of your choices. What we value matters, we become what we are connected to. You have the potential to become great, don't choose to be a jerk. What we think of as law is intimately associated with the creator. The more sophisticated the law, the better able to retain continuity. It should be obvious to anyone paying attention that politicians lie for a living. They are in the business of making money. If it is convenient, they may do something good for the country. Lust for power is the worst problem humans face, deadly. The distribution of power in society. Behavior is linked to the perception of equality and the expressed values of the culture you are in, value, or are connected to. Power is used to enforce values. Power doesn't negotiate. Many high-level members of society believe they are upholding the law. Here is the whole of the law. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. The responsible behavior among many men in Western culture, is linked to the women they love. Without the women, most men would probably behave less responsibly. This is a partnership of shared goals. The lazy man's path to wisdom, form an opinion before you have enough facts. It is important to note that in some matters you will never have enough facts. Law is for government, so it is no surprise that those in power will subvert the law. There have always been unjust laws and rule of law has never really existed, it is just an elusive ideal. The concept of law does not appear to be well understood, especially by law enforcement. There is more than one kind of law. Natural law, self-balancing. Emergent law, self-organizing. Foundational law, unknown origin, may be emergent. Man-made law, used to control or manipulate. It is certain that we have a government out of control. Mafia tactics for filthy lucre. At the top there appears to be a satanic cabal that sheds the blood of our most innocent. Trust no one, question everything. All of life exists in a stream of energy. Science cannot tell you where this energy came from their best guess, nothing is unstable. There are many unanswered questions in physics, more than you might realize. Russell's residue, philosophical problems with solutions become science. Imagine a religion started by one person who claims to have had divine revelation but no witnesses. Kind of like what happens on the internet today. Jesus was seen by thousands after being raised from the dead. Many died for their witness, none recanted. The value of liberty and the cost of liberty are not the same thing. You never know what something is worth until you lose it. The true value of anything is the portion of your life you are willing to trade for it. George Washington's horse was shot out from under him six times. Him and his men risked their lives to give us a reasonable chance at life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Greed and corruption have crept into the system to promote its favorite brand of stupidity, socialism. Twitter reminds me of the raging sea in Revelation. The turbulence of opinion. Is humanity struggling to understand what it is to be human? The idea of a republic is that we choose our best citizens to lead the country to prosperity. The quality of leadership has plummeted. Stupid is not constrained by reason. Evil is not constrained by ethics. There is no proper definition for a liberal. Their behavior contradicts their ideology to such an extent that I have to assume that some dark spiritual force is involved. Before you make a decision, ask yourself is it true, is it kind, is it helpful. When we look into the deep past, it very quickly becomes murky. When we look into the distant future, it very quickly becomes dim. Just as a judge can reinterpret the law, a blind man can reinterpret what he can't see. Governments are really good at creating criminal enterprises. Cultural identity regulates emotion. The better the match between expectation and experience, the more serotonin and the higher in the dominance hierarchy, the more serotonin. Why ya gotta be so hateful? Only love has the power to heal. Truth movement. Here is the truth, there is no red pill. You are in an occultocracy. You are in their system, they're not in your system. You can't fix the system from inside of the system. There is no place you can be in this world where you are outside of the system. To find out what is really going on in the world, you have to take in information from as many different sources as possible, average it all out, down to an approximation and hopefully, you will be in close proximity to the answer. This is wisdom of the crowd but it only works with an informed source. Some part of your behavior is imprinted by the culture or society you are in and there is very little you can do about it. The more you understand the subtleties, the better you can navigate the landscape. Is it brave to question or to doubt? The difference between foolishness and bravery is the sophistication of the reaction. Bravery is always a reaction to a situation, foolishness doesn't need an excuse. Chaos theory says that there are many more ways to act immorally than there are to act morally. Here the definition of moral is, any behavior that contributes to the health of the system in some significant way. Austerity is the main reason for the left-slash-right paradigm. In times of plenty people are more generous, in times of austerity people become more divided. 
Big data only has meaning when we convert it into something meaningful like a metaphor or an image. Patterns can be so buried in the data that we have to tease it out. Free will is relational, no choice can be made without some perception of state space. As the resolution increases, the degrees of freedom increase and this includes the dynamics. When the nuance becomes deep enough, no choice is possible. The loony left thinks that they have the right to freedom of speech and everyone that doesn't agree with them needs to shut up. When freedom of speech is gone, it will be gone for everyone. People in power will decide and power doesn't negotiate. Social contract whether by subjugation or consensus, it is the consensus of the group that subjugates the individual, the intentional field, and it is the balancing of power among individuals that guides the consensus. The dynamics are a multidimensional complex system. To see through the thin veneer of deception is a gift. Deception is a social tool, and while you may choose to believe you are above this kind of behavior, if you really study how you interact with society you will see deception everywhere. It is very subtle, and only the most clever people do this very well and take advantage of the dynamics involved, like a game of chess. How is deception written into the fabric of reality? We are no longer in the garden. It is the esoteric knowledge of the mystics, the idea of squaring the circle, the promise of something that cannot be delivered. The best explanation, is an explanation that does not require further explanation. Arguing over political ideologies such as Democrat vs Republican is pointless, a distraction. It is like saying I would rather be eaten by a shark than a lion. What is important is the direction the country is moving in. If we are headed for the edge of a cliff, maybe someone should take note and set aside the bequeering long enough to make a wise decision in the matter. Aligning yourself with government or anti-government is a false dichotomy. We are all a part of the same social system. The health of the system depends on a correct understanding of our particular role in the system. The idea that the end justifies the means is one of the most dangerous ideas. We do not possess any real control and no one understands the system enough to determine what the end would actually be, and so the means become all important. What we need is practical wisdom. No one should be immune from accountability. Exercise wisdom in all of your affairs. I have come to detest the word evolution because of its association with materialism and eugenics. Emergence has a more natural position is the scheme of things simply because it shows the value of relationships and the superiority of interconnectedness over diversification. We appear to have a social engine that generates vast amounts of greed and corruption and as a byproduct, we end up with large populations of disenfranchised citizens with no prospect for a future. As this dependent population increases, those in power will at some point decide to call the population for the good of the system. It is the system that is the problem. Organizational structures and self-referential noise, the fitness landscape requires balance. As the system matures it goes through stages, often moving from a competitive environment to a cooperative environment with agents forming a range of associations. If the stakes are high enough and the complexity is rich enough you will get very sudden cascades from chaotic attractors. The fitness peaks will become steeper and the whole landscape may become very extended in the vertical axis. At some point an avalanche of monumental proportions will be produced. This is what extinction level events are. Is religion failing? Imagine that I have a list of rules to live by, no matter the source, and I give out copies of this list. If I am doing this for profit, then it is certain that I am putting my own interest ahead of others. If I am doing this for free, every person will see different values associated with this list, keep what you like and discard the rest. How many of these rules are actually tested will also vary. We have a branching out of disagreements as to what these rules should actually be. This is the sea of humanity, a raging sea. Spirituality will never fail, it connects. Spirituality says, you are loved, you are valued, I want to be with you, I want to share my life and experiences with you, I want you to prosper, I want to help you create meaningful relationships that grow and connect and like a field of barley, can be reaped. This harvest will be magnificent. What percentage of your social interaction is motivated by convention, ritual, and routine? Why do we do this, lazy habit, etiquette, or maybe some agenda? Whatever the reason, consider this, value-driven behavior is always better than ego-driven behavior. Don't let your self-narrative drive your behavior. Live your life as an artful expression. Like music, the highs and lows are there for a reason. Reading the enemy's playbook, we would first, have to assume that we have enemies but this idea is flawed. We are all part of the same social system and those we might think of as enemies are actually agents that are driving the system in ways that we don't approve of. The most important thing is to value the good things. Do not let someone else define what is good and what isn't. Exercise your free will and decide for yourself. Don't let someone else control the definitions. We must also remember that because we cannot predict where we will end up any better than we can predict the weather, the means become all important. It is impossible for men to look upon each other as equals, there is always tension because of ambition and desire. When a man does not know what drives him, he goes about painting the world with his own unique palette of colors, 
convinced that the ones he has chosen are correct and it is everyone else that is wrong. Peace is the highest achievement of men but it does not come from agreement or compromise. Peace is the final image, woven into the tapestry of meaning and value within our relationships. There should be a quality of harmonious integration of disparate ideals. The wisdom required to do this is beyond the scope of human comprehension. Congress has become a design by committee organization. Quite often a politician is a lawyer gone bad. The idea that social engineers understand the human condition is fatally flawed and their conclusions will only result in a further deterioration of the social fabric, blowback, etc. The more incompetent you are the less you realize it. We are talking about a system that is so complex that it makes weather systems look simple. We cannot predict what the weather will be in 30 days, we can only give a range of behaviors. It is even more difficult with social systems. Especially if you ignore the spiritual component. A bureaucracy creates policies that must be enforced and so we have the police. This top-down model has limitations. It is highly susceptible to low-level black and white thinking and does not possess the dynamic variation necessary to discover the maximum number of solutions possible. A better model would be coaching. A coach guides the direction of the team that has a quality of self-organization, creating an amazing number of possibilities through the process of emergence. The greater good and the common good are two entirely different things. The greater good is an untenable ideology and the common good says that all men have unalienable rights endowed by their creator, among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. This includes all men. In an honor culture, the incessant antagonistic bantering is part of a power dynamic designed to control or enforce the distribution of influence in a particular group. Having good EQ helps navigate the drama associated with this turbulent dynamic. Our focus from this moment forward must be on the health of the system as a whole. This dynamic, interactive system has many components that we are just beginning to understand. As our understanding increases we should be able to predict a range of possible behaviors, depending on what we change. The goal is not control, it is understanding. If a man runs foolishly down the road to destruction, if he lies in wait to destroy the life of another, if he believes he is clever enough to escape his own fate and I do nothing to warn him or stop him then, I am not being loving. Apathy is the enemy of love. Deception is an ever-present, pervasive influence on the social fabric, generating illusions and expressions that mystify and bewilder. Most do not understand what they are looking at or simply ignore the ramifications, that we are somehow involved in our own deception. Right action is measured in the heart of every man. His skill in determining right action will vary from man to man. The consequences ripple through history, sometimes in a smooth, calm fashion and sometimes as a tumultuous storm. The people at a sporting event or rock concert are generating a field, a very intense field and something is feeding on it. You might think that mankind has discovered all of the basic fields in nature, nothing could be further from the truth. We are just beginning our journey of discovery. When you are connected to the things worthy of valuing, you will be given good things and when you take without merit, you will be exiled. Desire even of the good things must be followed up by right action. Emotional intelligence, as a course of action, is more about understanding and less about manipulation, more about connecting and less about positioning. What we value matters. You are a composite of the things you are connected to. Imagine if the elite became so powerful and power became so concentrated that they depopulated the planet to some sustainable level and forced the survivors into megacities with tiny apartments and mass transportation and the average person became a willing slave to a system that pretends to be the greatest good for the greatest number. If the bureaucrats gain the power over life and death, life, your life, will become essentially worthless. Could there be a push to dumb down the population and blur the lines of moral behavior? If you agree to blur the line at what point do we try to re-establish a boundary between what is acceptable and what should be discouraged? Maybe the people in power are being clever enough to move us into a position where we are dependent on a totalitarian regime. I suspect that the government of any country could easily become, as a course of natural human behavior, a criminal enterprise. Since we have been given the gift of free moral agency, we are required to take on the responsibilities included with this freedom, each being responsible within his sphere of influence. To promote dignity and well-being among all men as is our moral duty. To ignore or deny moral responsibility is a cancer to any society. No man is an island and if our brother suffers, we too will certainly suffer. Our hope is peace, founded in love and goodwill towards all men. We are not required to suffer the fool. When a fool rises up to promote his form of stupidity, he must be brought to justice, else we all suffer. You have the lone visionary whose idea rises above the noise, and then you have the mediocrity of the committee. So, how do we balance the two? Who decides which ideas are the best? This concern is very different from the concern of what happens when a small group gains too much power and control, oligarchies and criminal enterprises. We should always be suspicious of power. In any society a concentration of power should be avoided at all cost. Checks and balances were built into our constitutional republic to prevent corruption but the system isn't perfect, for example, a very clever lawyer can create a lot of damage. 
We have to think of the system as a fitness landscape with many unpredictable self-organizing parts and we must look for ways to balance the system to achieve the maximum fitness. If the United States were a car and we had neglected to do the scheduled maintenance, at some point in time the car will be running so badly that it really doesn't matter who's driving, the car is not going to go very far. The most skillful driver and the best fuel available will make very little difference. What you are connected to matters. If you are connected to hate and aggression it will permeate your being like a cancer, causing wounds of some form. These wounds are highly infectious and you can easily spread them throughout your community, and many unwittingly do this. These wounds cannot be treated by being lazy, there is no easy route to recovery. A little laughter may cure a small wound, but for a great wound, only love can heal. Love is a process that cuts through many realms, including the physical, the emotional, and the spiritual. We have to ask, what the profit could possibly be? If the rule of law is violated at the top, is the profit continuity of government, is it to promote the will of the people, could it be the enrichment of those directly involved in the criminal enterprise? It is certain that in any situation that would warrant, violation of the rule of law, those involved should be scrutinized, the violations corrected and the facts disclosed. If we follow the money and find that those involved have suddenly become far more wealthy, this should be a red flag, no society would long endure this kind of behavior. Concentrations of power in control systems or top-down control must be limited to the systems where the results are optimized. This turns out to have a very small number of applications, because very well-designed systems will have a nested hierarchy, with self-organization operating independently to some extent. When the higher levels try to manage something that was already self-correcting, we end up losing fitness in the system, this can cascade through the system in a butterfly effect. The system requires the generation of wealth. We should separate our thinking into at least two categories, things that generate wealth and things that distribute wealth, like casinos. Bureaucracies are very good at redistributing wealth and will come up with a myriad of ways to diffuse the energy. If we are talking about a government, at some point the most important thing becomes continuity of government, at that point, all is lost. Just in case it isn't obvious, the most important thing is continually tuning the system so that it generates the most wealth possible. The idea of liberty is not to allow my neighbor to behave as a stupid or irresponsible manner. If he is hell-bent on his own destruction, I am not required to let him take me down with him. Our form of government will only succeed as long as we are guided by our moral compass and exercise practical wisdom. Any society that thinks it can remove all moral constraints is doomed to the whims of debauchery. We have to be very careful when we try to describe political ideologies, the reason, the agendas are often buried so deep that they can contradict the general makeup of the policies they espouse. We have to ask, who benefits when we question a course of action? We also need to be experts at human nature and one of these areas is game theory. Bruce Bueno de Mesquita has studied this field and has garnered a reputation for accurate predictions. The problem is, when we tweak the system because of a better understanding, the system changes in new and unpredictable ways. Systems self-organize, this includes societies. A general and alarming trend is the concentration of power because as the power concentrates, the ability to disrupt the system increases exponentially. All systems will balance over time, the forces involved in a scenario like disruption to an oligarchy are catastrophic, the classic lose-lose scenario. Peace resides in a wisdom so profound that surely God is involved, we simply can't do it on our own. The middle class is the engine of our economy and it makes no sense for any politician to move us in the wrong direction because of greed and corruption, just saying, try to be wise. Engines need to be tuned, our engine is only running on three cylinders right now. The system has a dynamic that is accelerating, with turbulence that we probably won't be able to manage. If I do not answer the why question, I should not proceed to the how question. Let's say we ask the question why should I become wealthy the desire for money drives the system in ways that are difficult to predict and the very wealthy gain the system to their advantage. The desire of the average person gives the very wealthy more advantage and no one is asking whether we should be trying to find a healthy balance in the system. In other words the game is rigged. Every gambler should understand not only the odds but also the deeper meaning of life. Our core values are the most important part of living. This has a spiritual component that will never be discussed or questioned by people that care far too much about money. The middle class is the engine of our economy, the producers and customers, and the middle class is dying. Power is not linked to reason, this is clear from history. Totalitarian regimes fear intellectuals, they are always silenced. Power and control are an illusion, what we have are degrees of freedom. To improve our situation we must allow liberty and the freedom to make mistakes so that we can identify and avoid further mistakes. We should try to lift the foolhardy out of ignorance when we are able and not beat them down into despair. We become what we are connected to the choice is always present. You cannot force unity and you cannot prevent division. Having a strategy for framing the problems in such a way that potential solutions become more visible could be a useful approach. People generally care only about the problems that affect them. 
you could be in a position where you are giving 110% to prevent a problem from spilling over into other areas and affecting other people. I have also seen people go the other way and force the problem to spill out in such a way that it is impossible to ignore. Complex dynamic systems always create unexpected behaviors. Observation in as many dimensions as possible is always required to understand complex systems. What we know that we know. What we know that we don't know. What we don't know that we don't know, reality tree. Where we are trying to get to, future reality tree. Observation, evaporating cloud. We have a perfect storm of unprecedented situations. Shrinking middle class. Aging population. Velocity of money in decline. Retail stores collapsing. Economic disparity. Sovereign debt. Rule of law being ignored from the bottom to the top. Disruptive technologies increasing. Strategies to solve these problems are either very poor or non-existent. The ability to keep the power of the three branches of government separate so as to preserve liberty is no longer possible. Power in government is now so entrenched that it will destroy the very thing that is keeping it alive. All laws must be legislated by our representatives, all bureaucracies managed by the elected officials and all judgments decided by the will of the people. Corruption should not be allowed to infect the decisions of our leaders. Creating a robust, dynamic economy, the number one priority is the environment, the healthier the planet, the healthier the economy. The number two priority is maximizing opportunity. The middle class is the engine of the economy and opportunity is better than handouts. The number three priority is liberty because it is the greatest driver of innovation and motivation. The number four priority is rule of law, all people must be equal under the law. The fifth priority is separation of power because no society can long endure when corruption is allowed to gain a foothold. Should we be training psychopaths to be experts at manipulation? There are certain positions that psychopaths gravitate towards and these are exactly the places where they can do the most damage. As a society, we need to be smarter than this. We cannot afford to let stupidity reign. The best evidence of unsophisticated ideas is the behavior that follows. When a religious system or a government organizes into a bureaucracy, it is the bureaucracy that incessantly moves all activities increasingly and inevitably towards its own destruction. The momentum will always become greater than the influence of its wisest members. When those in power reach the opinion that they are somehow better than everyone else then, we have reached the point where they become an existential threat to humanity itself. In politics the goal is always control, lacking wisdom, as history has shown in every case, they collapse the system because of the influence of power and selfish choices. As a general rule, governments have a lot more opportunity for evil than all of the criminals combined. In fact, the government is often responsible for creating the criminals, take prohibition as an example. Is there a mindset that says compromising the population makes them easier to control? Ideology will not fix anything, only understanding can do this. The level of understanding required to fix the mess we are in is beyond the scope of human comprehension. Essentially, evil is a lack of understanding. The more you understand, the more alive you are. Without understanding you are dead inside. All of the chaos and hatred is being created by a kind of zombie mentality. This idea of the abundant life being somewhat ethereal has merit. Think about the things that really make you happy. How many of these things had a tangible material quality, probably very few of them. Understanding is the key to the abundant life, gain understanding. The proper order is spiritual things, then the connection to loved ones, emotional, and at the bottom, material things. How you value the various social systems depends on where you are in the strata. This makes it difficult for any one group to understand what the best models should look like. One of the best metrics would have to be maximization of dignity, trust, and quality of life. The disagreements will be in the area of distribution. There is a hierarchy of nested behaviors and these qualities will have a great influence on the behaviors in every level. Opportunity is better than handouts and responsibility more important than entitlements. The correct implementation of a constitutional republic with the rule of law is, a good and moral mayor, selected by the people, oversees the city, a good and moral sheriff, selected by the people, oversees the county, a good and moral governor, selected by the people, oversees the state. All of our elected representatives must be of good character and also possess the necessary capabilities or qualities along with a sense of fiduciary responsibility, in short, the moral will and the moral skill to do the right thing, and we rely on our best citizens to lead us to prosperity. In order for a people to want to contribute to a system, they have to be invested in the system. These connections are so important and involve both previous contributions and trust in future returns. A key feature in maximizing the health of the system is opportunity with increasing levels of contribution slash reward cycles. Without this trust is difficult to build. The worst thing to do is create entitlements through handouts. The main point, trust is built slowly over time and can be destroyed very quickly, handouts destroy productivity when overused. Under the proper conditions, an amazing amount of prosperity can be created. Positive emergent behaviors require liberty, 
community, investment, trust, etc. Robust systems have a dynamic hierarchy of nested behaviors. How many moves ahead are you able to think when playing chess? How much effort are you willing to commit to understanding the deeply nuanced structure? Probably, success is not what you think it is. Adventures require novelty. Value has interesting surprises. In societies where power has been concentrated, the psychopaths are sheltered from accountability, as you can imagine, this creates extreme problems that cannot be easily corrected. The main problem, the problem that we can actually control, is not allowing power to concentrate. A bureaucracy can self-organize so that corruption is not only possible, it is guaranteed. We have the benefit of history as a guide for organizing social systems, whereby many generations looked for ways to optimize their societies and it is amazing to me how few people today are looking back at these valuable lessons before forming an opinion. Traditional approaches to living have a proven track record of success. Progress is not measured by how new an idea is and we do not live in a democracy for the simple reason that democracies are fragile. Our system of government is called a constitutional republic with the rule of law. The key features are representation, separation of powers and equality under the law. Tuning this system for optimization is proving to be tricky because of human nature. Organized scarcity is the best way to increase your profits. This is the idea of the ends justify the means. There are second and third order effects that will take away all of the gains and then some. Wisdom is better than gold, peace is better than profit. As the resources of the planet are exhausted, you can expect those in power to move us in the direction of a two-tier society and while this looks very attractive from the top, there is a glaring flaw in the ideology. We are all family and most people have a great capacity for love. Who would allow their loved ones to suffer? The tiers of society. In small groups, many forms of government work reasonably well including communism, socialism, and anarchy, but they all fail in larger groups. The very large groups require checks and balances to manage the extreme forces involved. Responsibility at these scales always breaks down and power without accountability is a recipe for disaster. A network of control systems that are not allowed to become so large that they begin controlling the other nodes in the network would be ideal, and efficiency should be prioritized. Liberty at the individual scale should be encouraged and extreme fluctuations in personal wealth should have control limits. As an example someone that has earned enough money that they could not possibly spend it in 10 lifetimes has probably reached the limit, and someone, especially a child, that does not have enough to eat should receive some form of opportunity. Concentrations of power always lead to organized crime and if enough power is involved, law enforcement is used as a control mechanism. For many decades the economy had little to fear from scarcity there was enough for everyone even though it was not distributed fairly. Compared to where we are headed now, those were the good old days. We have reached that unfortunate point in history where unlimited growth is no longer possible. Rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic is not the solution. We could try throttling down a bit and steering away from disaster. There is probably going to be a fierce battle for the helm and when the dust settles, a gash along the side of the ship. Bread and circuses, this left slash right paradigm is a distraction, all of the real trouble is so high and out of sight that you will never hear about it. There are contracts in place to prevent disruption from ever being an option. There are no laws to prevent the 0.001% from doing whatever they want. Tolerance is not the issue, everyone wants tolerance. The issue is societal turbulence. Ideologies create conflict. We cannot force unity and we cannot prevent division, what we need is practical wisdom and a moral compass. Gray regions must be managed wisely, imagine a company that said do whatever you want and decide on your own salary, no meaningful work would ever get done. Once you obtain the ability to manipulate thousands of people without accountability, as a general rule, you become an evil prick. This is the nature of power. Power without accountability is a recipe for disaster. In politics the goal is control. The top is overpopulated with psychopaths, they practice strange rituals that you don't want to know about. The elite talk about two groups, the useful idiots and the useless eaters. Which one are you? If you think you know something, I can guarantee you don't. Look at history, there were always more bad kings than good ones. Should we all join hands and sing come ba ya? You can't force unity and you can't prevent division. You have the psychopath with a lust for power and you have the user with an overwhelming sense of entitlement. The people that don't suffer from these conditions often don't have the resources to manage their own problems, let alone the tidal wave of stupidity that has engulfed our nation but are often called on to join the fight. If I am giving wise counsel to a person that is hell-bent on his own destruction and he does not head my advice or worse, tries to take me down with him then, I am under no obligation to unite with this fool. So many posts from experts that want to sell you something. It is hard for me to not be cynical. The social fabric is deteriorating and these experts can't stop it, they're too busy making a profit. If you want to earn the right to tell people how to be a leader, you should be out in the trenches, trying to do something about the madness all around us. If you don't know what I'm talking about then, you are part of the problem. 
I don't see leaders and followers, not anymore. I see psychopaths, useful idiots, useless eaters, and chaos. The good people of the world must be in hiding, keeping their heads down. This will turn out to be a big mistake. Things don't get better through ignorance. There is strength in numbers but the good people of the world are being tricked into fighting with each other. Should we ride this train right over the cliff all the time be querying over the best seats? How could 8,000 people control 7 billion people? Think about this. They would have to use scheming and manipulation, in fact they would need to have everyone focus on their neighbor or their brother but not their boss. The chain of command must remain strong and as long as the hierarchy is intact, control is assured. It does not matter what these 8,000 want to do, they will be able to con the rest of us into compliance. I don't like to see anyone suffer. We look for ways to increase value in our life but often make mistakes. Let's say you have a company and you tell everyone come in for as many hours as you want, do whatever you like and name your own salary, no work would get done. Imagine if the roads had no lines, no signs, and no speed limits, the amount of suffering would outweigh the freedom of choice. It is not wise to remove the balcony rail from your 10-story balcony, it is keeping you safe. Society is driven by the fierce winds of subjective opinion, whereby the balance is always tested, always in flux. Know this, your opinion is part of a continuum of possibilities that lives in the swirling landscape of humanity and if the world is not what you think it should be, probably, you are standing in the wrong place. There must be a moral control system in place to keep balance so that we never reach a tipping point. If we define progress as the accumulation of things, we are already lost. We must be able to identify and evaluate the various parts of the system and their influence on the system as a whole. Proceeding without a correct understanding will lead to second and third order effects that will run away out of control. The focus must be ethical constraints. Many of the behaviors in our society are shaped by the turbulence of various ideologies for example one person enjoys reading books but is mocked by another who enjoys playing sports. This kind of division has been going on as long as humans have been on the planet. So how can the turbulence be managed? First, it must be recognized and understood and then, we must make a real effort to teach our children tolerance. Children need structure during early childhood. They must learn the value of proper behavior. The range of acceptable behavior is not infinite. You can't let a child eat whatever they want. All of the hatred is a direct result of our failing to train up a child in the way that they should go. Liberal ideologies only lead to more turbulence. No structure, no harmony. When we speak of opposing forces like liberty versus control, it becomes important to understand the dynamics involved. I will use a car engine to illustrate. The number of pistons in a car's engine has a range of possibilities that cannot be exceeded without significant disruption to performance. We see many 4, 6, and 8-cylinder engines and not much else. A 1-cylinder engine will not perform well and the same goes for an 86-cylinder engine. Social systems must be tuned but this requires understanding and understanding requires effort. There are far too many lazy people in positions of power because it is human nature to take the path of least resistance. Liberty is great but too much is very much like an 86-cylinder engine. Control always gives the illusion of power and power without accountability is a recipe for disaster. There is a lot of work to be done. Let us hope that wisdom prevails. There is a reason, I don't believe in experts. An uninformed leader will always skew the opinion of an informed crowd, wisdom of the crowd, in the wrong direction. There is an unnecessary influence from these so-called, self-proclaimed experts. I sit back and watch the results. If you don't understand the system, you can't fix it. The best evidence of unsophisticated ideas is the behavior that follows. Each of us has a fiduciary responsibility to behave in a manner that creates fitness or value in the fitness landscape so that our actions do not spill over into the landscape and cause unnecessary turbulence, within our sphere of influence. Help some harm none. None of us has the power to save the world however, if we all followed this principle, we could maximize the fitness. We all have differences and similarities, I think this is by design. We are similar to some people and different from others but imagine a piece of music with just one note, at one level of volume, repeating the same beat and tempo. Wouldn't that be a very boring song? Conservatives are very much like the foundation of a piece of music, something familiar and progressives are like the surprising bits of the piece that come along that you weren't quite expecting but yet, appreciate. Now if it isn't too far out into left field, there is a pleasant cognitive connection with the previous expectation and these surprises give the piece much more meaning and value especially when done well. So here we see a combination of the expected and the unexpected in some fluctuating ratio that must also be considered. Some people prefer lots of variation while others, not so much and it is this difference between the conservative and the progressive in some area of the social fabric on some continuum or range of expression that makes up a culture. The biggest problem with AI will be overproduction. How disruptive is overproduction? As with anything it will vary with the particular situation but there will be cases when the disruption will be severe enough to cause great harm. The idea of playful conflict is very strange in the sense that, 
it is more interesting to interrupt the harmonious regularity with a bit of well-conceived conflict and the more sophisticated, the more pleasurable the experience but unsophisticated or stupid conflict looks very much like evil. There is a continuum of possibilities generated by free moral agents. What we value matters, we become what we are connected to and it is the quality or sophistication that becomes important. Truth is branching out into the nothingness as possibilities. You are the voice of resistance. Sounds great, right? Why are we trying to save this country, so they can murder more unborn babies? Where was the voice of resistance during the trial of Jesus? Hint, Barabbas. Which kingdom do you belong to, why do you trouble yourself with these people, they will have their reward. If every country exported their problems in the form of immigrants into the USA, it would not be long before our country was worse off than there's people in countries that do not manage their leaders and cannot produce products and services in a sophisticated manner will as a general rule, try to move somewhere else and the dysfunction will spread like a cancer. Government is inherently opposed to liberty, a form of necessary evil. When parts of the government organize into a criminal enterprise as a result of greed and stupidity then it is certain that they have broken the social contract, which by definition is unlawful. Under the social contract, all laws implemented to enforce and perpetuate the corruption are null and void. There are so many religions today. Where did all of these belief systems come from? What do they all have in common? What have these beliefs achieved? What can we prove? It is all about knowledge, as they say, knowledge is power but power and control are an illusion. We live in the shadows of perception. Do we have the power to judge good and evil because Eve ate of the fruit? No, this knowledge represents a loss of some kind. These belief systems are filters and innocence is unfiltered perception, a belief system is unnecessary. In order for a constitutional republic to function properly, the citizenry and the leadership must be of good moral character. All other ideologies are concerned not with morality but with power and control. Social systems always self-organize, power and control are an illusion. Capitalism as an ideology is flawed just as every ideology is flawed. The dynamic associations require constant tuning for optimization. As an example, overproduction can can a runaway, detrimental effect on the health of the system. The idea here is not to be married to an ideology but to think in terms of the health of the system. The system's dynamics are often a clue. Turbulence creates unpredictable outcomes and it is the desire for control that causes much of the trouble in social systems. All ideologies are flawed for the simple reason that all people are flawed. The idea of sophistication in a system is, the various parts of the system are self-correcting. Any system is a flow towards a goal with the flow having some degree of turbulence. If the system has a mechanism to explore state space, we would expect the backflow of information to optimize the outcome. The better this is managed the more the sophistication. Combinatorics and networks is the idea that a relatively small group of interacting agents can recombine in a surprisingly large number of ways. Space is not an empty stage and it is not an ether it is more like a nested hierarchy of action. The discrete bits are precise ratios of a quantum of action. Dimensions don't exist before action and not all dimensions are equal. This must be some kind of decision engine generating novelty with the fuel being something like the difference between harmonic regularity and self-referential noise. Every engine takes advantage of a difference and we may not be able to name this difference. The Big Bang could be a large-scale phase transition in state space. Each step in the process has some range of choices and when the choice becomes too fine-grained, criticality at the edge of chaos, it is the chaos that drives the choice one way or the other. This is a random walk, the testing of state space, the measuring of value. All value is not equal and it is the network or range of associations that controls or decides what is valuable and what is not. The result is increasing levels of sophistication. The idea that value exists in state space and must be measured and located for some purpose suggests consciousness is behind all of this activity. As a general rule a particular ideology will say our ideology is the best, just look how bad the other ideology is doing. The flaw in every ideology is human nature, humans control every system and until humans make an effort to understand the system properly, parts of every system will suffer. This has been going on all the way back to Plato and beyond. People only care about problems that affect them directly so there is this idea that we need to get people to invest in the system in a way that generates wealth in a sustainable manner. A well-designed system will self-organize creating the most benefit possible and those controlling the system have to understand the system well, you can't just throw any stupid, greedy bastard into a position of power and expect good results. Brilliant checks and balances come to mind fairness is easy enough to understand that even a child gets it. I have never been impressed by socialism, libertarianism, oligarchies, communism, capitalism, anarchy, etc. Why do people try to defend these systems? The founding principles of fair and reasonable social behavior that governs the affairs of men will at times need to be more flexible than a rigid set of rules. When something stops working we need to find out why and fix it. If the fix doesn't fall into a particular ideology it is because of complexity. In some areas we are just going to have to wing it. 
hopefully there will be brilliant people around to help out but brilliant processes are better than brilliant people. Creating an answer from axioms or rules of the game, Achilles can never overtake the tortoise because of infinite regress or Achilles will always overtake the tortoise given enough time because Achilles will always cover more distance than the tortoise in the same unit of time. Society is like a group of children on the playground deciding to play a game, so they come up with a set of rules. It isn't long before the bullies in the group begin to cheat, they do this because they can. The other kids complain but to no avail. The rules don't apply to the bullies and it never occurs to the other kids that they outnumber the bullies by a wide margin. This is the way groups always organize themselves and it has nothing to do with fairness or justice. When the unsophisticated agents begin disrupting the system to the point of collapsing the system or destroying the integrity, they must be removed. Sophisticated agents enhance the health of the system so by definition, any excessive turbulence is unhealthy and must be scrutinized. A well-designed system is self-correcting with turbulence that is minimal and brief. We should be relying on our best citizens for guidance and they must possess and exercise a strong fiduciary commitment. Secrets always prevent the possibility of making our leaders accountable. Principle before personality. This is the opposite of herd behavior. You should always conduct yourself in a manner that is moral and ethical, not to win friends and influence people but because it is right. It has been said that men are essentially good but this is incorrect, you have to fight for principles, you have to struggle to do the right thing, it is not always easy, it is against our own nature. I have heard reports that it would take 50 agents in the field to monitor every suspected nutcase in the population, a 50 to 1 ratio. This does not speak well for the efficiency of the agencies. These agencies have been acting strange for many years, so who benefits? A tyrannical government will do whatever they have to, to disarm and silence the people. Continuity of consciousness. There is always some constraint on perception, choices, etc. How can a system be infinite? As we add to a system, it is the system itself that changes so that distinctions would probably become more fine-grained over time and the continuity would be coarse-grained. The idea that we should have sensible rules to live by is like traffic laws in that we need to keep from crashing into each other. When a group, Middle East, comes up with really stupid rules, we have to stop them from pushing these rules on us or we will end up just like them. The Second Amendment has been doomed since the 30s. That's when they started whittling away the right to protect yourself. When guns came into existence, so too did the natural right to a fair and reasonable defense against them. The police will tell you that you don't have the right to protect yourself, that's our job. The pizza guy can get to my house faster than the police. You can't sue the police for failing to protect you, many have tried. Far less than 1% of the people killed, have been killed by criminals, more than 99% have been killed legally, by governments. No person or group of people should have enough power to control the president. Power must be broken up whenever it concentrates. Power without accountability is a prescription for disaster. The people are controlled by power for the purpose of devouring their labor. Force of will to secure obedience will always include deception, manipulation, and coercion. The necessity to compel the population to obedience by those who wish to profit from their labor, do so by any means necessary. The advantage goes to those that are not constrained by moral conviction. Law is by nature, static, immutable. Justice lives in the realm of dynamic tension and must maintain balance. These forces are controlled by the will of the agents involved and become so complex that the idea of fairness is always fluctuating, self-organizing, and seeking some ideal. All ideologies are flawed for the simple reason that all men are flawed. Angels have a form of hive mind, even the fallen angels. God's angels are not able to make the same choices as humans these choices don't exist. Whether the fallen angels had more choices in the past, I cannot say but now their choices are constrained by their fallen condition. Where are all the bogeymen? Every effort to identify them leads back to us. There are cycles of destruction that swirl and build and then dissipate. There are forces hidden in the folds of society that pulse and glide through the fabric of our lives. In our attempts to control the turbulence, we inadvertently divert some of the energy upon one another with the unexpected outcome causing resentment and conflict. Underneath all of this are the dark creatures that feed on our misery and when they sense food they move to places where resentment is building and add to the energy in a feeding frenzy. The stream of energy gives life to the dark and the light and it is your location in the stream that matters. The energy must flow, for without it there is nothing. The reality we construct is a collection of choices interacting within the flow. The left wants voters that are poor hungry and stupid. This is the voter base for the left because they are dependent. Any government big enough to give you everything you need, is big enough to take everything you have. Socialism will fail for the same reason communism failed, because it makes no distinction between those who will not take care of themselves and those who cannot take care of themselves. The problem with socialism is, eventually you run out of other people's money. So who is right? One side says, guns are necessary for self-defense and the other side says the world would be a much better place if there were no guns. Humanity is a raging sea of opinions and there is no consensus when it comes to critical issues. 
In the book of Revelation, there is this idea of a glassy sea, humanity is standing on a tranquil surface, the storm is over, we have reached agreement. It is the turbulence of opinion that creates the need for self-defense, and until the turbulence has been removed by a power greater than ourselves, the guns will remain. Control is an illusion, this idea that if we come up with just the right set of rules, everything will be great, is flawed. We cannot predict with any certainty that the outcome we are looking for is obtainable, it will only fall within some range of possibilities. People are among the most unpredictable creatures. Most do not understand the nature of desire. Great men have been driven to foolish behavior in the heat of passion, and the most reasonable person can be manipulated to the point that reason no longer has an influence. To understand power, we have to understand who the power serves. To understand people, we have to understand what they value. In times of plenty, in times of peace, in the good times, we forget how valuable liberty really is, it is only when these things are lost, that we realize our mistake. Displaced culture, suppose you move into another culture where it is considered normal for a man to rape an eight-year-old boy until bleeding and it is normal to treat his dog better than his wife. How long would you have to live in this culture before you accepted all of their rules? No matter which culture we are referring to or which direction the move is, I suspect that almost no one would ever accept all of the new rules. The human heart isn't wired that way. The sovereign power or general will of the people never seeks to harm itself, that is always caused by a particular will or subset of the body. The legislators must, at all times, remove themselves from any benefit or liability of a particular will and seek only to administer the will of the whole. When government ceases to administer the sovereign or general will of the people, the social contract is broken. The sovereign or general will is not democracy because the people do not always know how to prevent harm to the body, it is our best citizen's duty to discover the situations and methods that will best serve the sovereign or general will and at all times, work towards that aim. We cannot assume that humans are not flawed in every enterprise. The guidelines in the constitution only work with an ethical and moral citizenry, you should already know this. When the social contract is broken, the methods deployed to correct the system become radically different, otherwise we quickly dissolve into tyranny. Which do you prefer, practical wisdom and a moral compass or tyranny? When we can no longer oppose government by whatever means are necessary, as Thomas Jefferson stated, then we will very quickly dissolve into tyranny. The police will do what the boss says, not what is morally expedient. Our universities routinely train common sense and critical thinking out of the students. Violence is not the problem, it is a symptom. Violence is the result of manipulation from people of influence and we cannot say without great scrutiny whether it is justified violence or unjust violence. To initiate violence without just cause, being self-preservation, protection of property, etc., should result in a justified response. All creatures have the right to self-defense. Wealth without work causes complacency instead of gratefulness. Pleasure without conscience causes debauchery because desire is never filled. Knowledge without character causes arrogance because we forget how little we really know. Commerce without morality causes corruption because the money we pursue will enslave us. Science without humanity causes destruction because the endless separation and division makes us competitors. Worship without sacrifice causes alienation because it is shared experience and intimate disclosure that unites us. Politics without principle causes suffering because we are flawed humans and wisdom is rare. Men are always looking for enemies and if they can't find one, they will make one. No matter who is in power, some group will be singled out as an enemy and eliminated. No one can afford to let those in power become so powerful that they are able to eliminate any group they choose. All societies form an alliance through association and agreement concerning the rights, responsibilities and privileges of each member. There can be no privilege without responsibility. The combined strength of the union ensures the protection of the members. The leaders must at all times seek to administer the general will of the people and when they fail to do this the social contract is broken and the people are forced but not bound to obey. When we speak of AI what we are really talking about is a subset of intelligence. Imagine that a chess computer is playing against a human and the computer makes the game more challenging and interesting for the human and in the end, lets the human win. Wouldn't this generate more value than stomping the human into oblivion? Intelligence relies on meaning. We assign meaning to the world we encounter and in their own way, so will AI systems. Value generation will become important as the level of intelligence increases. The main point here is you have to live in the world as it exists because our influence on the world is limited, no matter how brilliant the ideology might be. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. Reciprocity is the idea that a social system requires balance. The trickster seeks to unbalance the system for the purpose of creating chaos because the chaos will create something novel and unpredictable. The value or quality of the outcome is purely subjective, the balance however is destroyed and a new relationship will begin to organize itself towards a balanced state as long as it remains unperturbed. How do natural systems achieve balance, they have no choice, it is either balance or oblivion. In one sense, 
you might think it's more sophisticated to live purely in the realm of reason, like the psychopath but value does not live there and becomes undefinable. Desire does not live there either, only intention. Law and logic live in the realm of precise relationships. Value and desire live in the realm of the heart. The more connected you are to the rest of creation, the more you feel. I would like to live a quiet, peaceful, simple, life. There are those around me that will, in their anger and hatred seek to punish me for such a lofty goal. Will you make yourself a friend of God or a tool for the devil? There are those that live as if nothing is a miracle and those that live as if everything is a miracle. Knowing good from evil is judgment, the idea being who made you judge over us. So how was innocence destroyed? If innocence is unfiltered perception then, judging filters our perception. The wisdom required to see the consequences of every choice is limited to some resolution, just like squaring the circle. When we judge, we overstep our bounds because of complexity. The entire world is obsessed with law, the lawful regularities of our physical reality. The law we experience is emergent, it is fractal. There are no perfect symmetries, everything we experience is an approximation of something else. The relationship of time and perfect law is something altogether different. There are many more ways to be disordered than ordered. There are many more ways to be unethical than ethical. Knowing good from evil requires a level of distinction we do not have access to. Light has the ability to explore state space in an instant of time. To give light something must be consumed. Light pierces the darkness and is consumed, truth pierces the chaos and is consumed. So what are the seven social processes that grease the slippery slope of evil? 1. Mindlessly taking the first small step. Use your critical thinking. 2. Dehumanization of others. If you are name-calling or trolling, this is you. 3. De-individuation of self. WWG Wanuga? WTF? 4. Diffusion of personal responsibility. Insanity of the mob. 5. Blind obedience to authority. Q has made many mistakes, I have been watching a long time. 6. Uncritical conformity to group norms. Not every Q follower, just some. It takes a special kind of stupid to be a Q-tard. Do not turn Q into a cult. 7. Passive tolerance to evil through inaction or indifference. This one is for the social media warriors. Philip Zimbardo, comments added. The creature embodies a map of the world or environment within its structure. Culture embodies a map of all maps as a new sphere. This map is holographic, dynamic, and powerful beyond all imagination, for it is driven by imagination, the light and dark dancing. These stories are the entangled memories, handed down generation after generation. A part of you will continue into the distant future as the story is rewritten by your descendants. Whatever is meaningful, whatever is lovely, whatever the story becomes, your part is living there. The movie The Dark Crystal tells a story similar to our plight. A thousand years ago on the planet Thra, a magical crystal is cracked, which allows two new races to appear, the Malevolent Skixis, who use the power of the Dark Crystal to continually replenish themselves, and the kind wizards called Mystics. The Mystics are too ineffectual and isolated to have much influence on society. The Skixis and too consumed by their own lust to be of any use to society as a whole. We are in some form of middle world in which we have to operate on a plane that is connected to the sacred and the profane. The path through this middle world is not certain, the forces involved are not predictable. Our guide has a subtle influence on our choices because we are always connected to many other paths. These entangled connections are not guides, they're the collection of choices in our environment. Most people do not know themselves. They are swayed by every flight of fancy. They trust when trust has not been earned. There are principles involved in staying on the right path. No good will come from any of your choices without divine intervention. God weaves his purpose into the lives of his children and they only see the threads afterwards, sometimes many years later. People who see the handiwork of God in everything are like schizophrenics, they see patterns everywhere. Not every perceived pattern is meaningful. Meaning is the goal, and patterns are the tool. At the other end of the spectrum are people who see no meaning in most of the patterns they encounter. They believe that life is meaningless. The great majority of people only see what they want to see, because the mind does not like to be wrong. Once you have passed the age of mindfulness, around seven years old, it quickly becomes difficult to revise the conceptual structure your mind has built up. This map of the world is a filtered representation that the mind uses to navigate the world. It is a mixture of reality and expectation. The idea that we understand the difference between good and evil fails to consider the complexity and interconnectedness of the infinite layers of influence. Our ability to understand and control this multidimensional system is limited by the resolution of each person in relationship to the mystery of their own mind and the branching out of complexity into a universe we can't explain. In order to get what you need, you have to know what you need. Need is lost in a sea of wants. You can't fix a problem you don't understand. Understanding is life. The direction of time's arrow is pointing down. 
The pyramid keeps its angle because when it is too steep and the difference between the haves and the have-nots is too great, it collapses under its own weight. When the angle is too shallow, wealth is destroyed. Nobility is seizing dignity, not giving it, the angle of repose. The fabric of society is woven into a tapestry of meaning that becomes worn out by time, and love keeps tying the frayed edges together again. The angle of repose in link to gravity. Gravity and information are related. Information and scale are related. Scale and gravity are related. If it's relational, there is a geometry involved. Truth lives in the past, the future is uncertain. Truth lives in the macro world, the micro world is uncertain. The micro future is formed into the macro past, through time, which is pointing down. Why logic and reason are insufficient guides in the transcendent nature of meaning. Trying to work out the logic of the two-party tyranny. You can't operate in the system without compromising ethics. There are many more ways to be disordered than ordered, there are many more ways to be unethical than ethical. Reason always resides within an emotional context. Reason must be integrated with higher order processing. What is that you ask? Chess computers don't enjoy winning. Everything is fields, even consciousness. Do we need to shout each other down to make our point? Jesus never did this. The reason Jesus whipped the money changers was to cleanse the temple for the most important sacrifice, the central hub of history. All events point to that moment. Growth is not the goal. All living systems seek value at the expense of truth. We are moving from a rich ecological environment to a rich technological environment. Unlimited growth is an illusion, what we will get will transcend the various values it is constructed from. To be ready for the next world, you must be transformed in this one. A reflection of the hero's journey. So many are trying to make a name for themselves as if this is a desire to be one. The name you should be seeking will be written on a white stone in heaven. Information is a difference that can make a difference, truth is information that doesn't change and self-referential noise is a difference that doesn't make a difference. No matter how much information we use to describe a tree, it will always be incomplete. Levels of description says that the only complete description of the tree is the tree itself. My concept of wealth is production. My income is based on production. Redistribution of wealth requires some exchange of value. When 50 people post the same story within the span of a few hours and they all request financial support, I have to wonder about their business model. Criminal justice reform. Disenfranchised, improperly socialized, naturally aggressive, at least until they are about 27 years of age. The government puts this population together into cages and expect the outcome to be predictable. No opportunities, no mentoring, no physiological, emotional or spiritual assistance. How is meaning stored in state space? Meaning is intimately associated with the eternal now. Meaning in the past could only be fixed by its value in the now and is not static. Memories of the past fluctuate for every creature with any useful meaning being measured against possibilities in the future. Meaning in the future is connected to the now in such a way that the set of possibilities is always constrained by previous associations and as the dimensions increase, the possibilities increase exponentially. The more distinctions associated with a particular concept, the more constrained. The meaning of words is not stable but scale dependent, over vast periods of time, meaning changes along with all of the words in use, as a collection of interrelated elements. Do not become married to any idea. Being free to change your perspective, opens the door to new discoveries. People color the information they take in with their preconceptions. This makes communication a bit of a challenge. The more we rely on our presuppositions, the less we will learn. All people have an incomplete vocabulary. All people are limited in their understanding by their preconceptions. We are using words to describe reality, we are painting a picture with words of what we think reality is, but this image is incomplete. There is always a subjective portion of this image that varies from person to person, this is a dynamic fluctuation. We live as we understand. No understanding, no life. Fractal degrees of possibility are determined by the dynamics that deception has on our ability to trust. In this we can see the appreciation of beauty and its associated result, desire. This is a variation of the idea of the terrible truth and the beautiful lie. The underlying choice breaks the symmetry of a particular position in the fractal structure, resulting in a material expression in our reality. Our connection to this dynamic is our enigmatic, nebulous perceptions. What is fluctuating is understanding. I have spent a lifetime absorbing the ideas I encounter and attempting to synthesize them into a comprehensive explanation of the world.